get some good propane before we get down yes. to the Alps. So that's the gas load done. Now, next stop, Eurotunnel. We are a bit late actually, <laughs> and we're only just starting. Find a detail, find a detail. <laughs> Day one in France on our favourite park up, and that can only mean one thing croissants and baguettes. And baguette, deux croissants, and a meringue. Five euros twenty. And that's breakfast sorted. So today it's 330 miles about five hours to the next stopover. Wow. We've been for a quick walk, stretch the legs, hitting the road again. Felt like quite a long drive today, 330 miles, but we are here now. It's all auto route all the way. A uh, place called Fallersburg, if I'm saying that correctly, on the air. Quite quirky, but the best thing about this place, it's free. And I think even the water and electricity is free. So, time for a bit of an explore through the tunnel into the town. I know where I'm coming tomorrow morning for cakes. Maybe it's not all about the cakes, it's about the baguette and the croissant. <laughs> it's very cold outside, so it'd be rude not to. Cheers. Cheers. I told her it'd be difficult to have soda water in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> with, with lime? So I have lime, lime syrup, not lime cordial, and a Perrier water. Not sure if it's the same, but between the three of us, we tried to work it out. I don't think it's quite the same. It's fizzy, isn't it? It's probably going to be really wrong, isn't it? <laughs> this bread is so warm. Just out of the oven, and I've got a little treat as well. Happy days, and literally, it's two minutes from the motorhome, just straight through that arch. First outing for the Ridge Monkey. Sausages. Looking good actually at first sight. 20 minutes. Job done. Some nice warm French bread. Morning. Morning. So our first day activity of the tour. And we're going to ride our bikes off for about an hour, hour and a half, just to get some exercise before we do a three or four hour drive into our next stop in Germany. And Andy's told us the route shows difficult. Wish us luck. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the cold has sapped the uh, 360 already. Not sure how that's going to perform in the snow. But uh, this bike ride is lovely, straight out the air onto tracks. Getting even better. We're in the woods now and properly on a track. Unless you're crazy like us, don't come on this route. We, we came from that direction through the bushes. The joys of being 
an EMA wife. Extreme to the max. <laughs> now, strictly speaking, I don't think you're actually allowed to go across there, but there is a bridge further down that way behind us. We're here at uh, the chateau. Is it So we've come from over there. We had to come down all the through these woods, which is quite tricky. I'm going to try and find an easier route back because this is a great place to come to. Obviously, I mean, look at these views. What do you think? Incredible. Thought I'd explore a bit more. Amazing how much of it has actually been preserved, like the window frames around the other side. It's gorgeous. We need to try and find a way in. That's legal, maybe. Legal. Remember that. So we came from down that road there, rode along. Don't ride up the canal and back because uh, you're not allowed to do that like we did. And then we just followed the road all the way up to here. That's about it. I think the only thing now is to try and find a route back. Coming back the roadway. But my goodness, is this steep. Oh, and in next to no time, we are back. That was quick, wasn't it, coming back? Although it was very steep. Good job we had e-bikes. Oh, yeah, it wouldn't have been so much fun, would it? All services done. Let's go, Germany. Here, Here we come. We come. Get your leader hosing on. I don't know how high we are at the moment, but my ears have popped several times of yours. Yeah. <laughs> Super high. So we're nearly there now, only 2.8 miles, but this is definitely not the main route into Ullendorf. <laughs>
good morning. Very early, 7.30, and it's really confused Michelle because she actually doesn't know where she is. <laughs> I got dressed and I said, oh, I've got to find something out the back. So while I'm in the back not looking, I don't, know, I don't even recognise where we are. I can't work it out whereabouts. <laughs> so I assume this is where we go. So look at this for a waiting area. So this is our all motorhomes start. You'll never complain about the cab area being cold again, will you? <laughs> it actually isn't that cold. It's very good. Yeah, ours is fine. Uh, insulated. Ours is fine. I'm impressed with it, yeah. I'm not sure about the tent version though. <laughs> Breakfast is looking good. I think I've gone for yeah, slightly more than what Michelle went for. Slightly. <laughs> Shower fixed, and now it's time to take a look around in the showroom. Get your wallet out, Barney. No. <laughs> Get your wallet out. You had half a cake yesterday. You owe me big time. It's going to take a few cakes to buy one of these. spotted the larger liner for two so we took out the regular size one this is the one with the big garage let's go and have a look oh that's definitely gonna fit our bikes in yeah look at me this is oh huge oh my gosh oh i'm excited to see inside then so what difference it looks <laughs> it's just like oh my gosh look at that oh gym party get the wine glass out get the gin glasses in there Oh my goodness gracious me. The table shrunk. That's better. Smaller table, isn't it? No. It does. It looks small. No, I think it's because everything else is so big. That's why the table looks small. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, we just wipe. So, this is a regular liner for two garage. And that is a line of a two long. So the base price of this is 213,000 euros. All in, this one here, a whopping 291,000 euros. Garage, it's, this is huge. It's 350 kilograms worth of payload in there. Easily get our bikes in. It's an A-class. Still really spacious. It's got the drop-down bed at the front and it's also got the twin beds at the back. The TV is good. Watch this mechanism here. So it's coming out. That's a big TV. You can see here because it's slightly narrower than the other Katargos. Then this piece here is also slightly narrower, but you know, I don't think you're losing anything at all in the bedroom area. One of the great improvements in the Katargos these days over our Katargo is the shut off bathroom. So it basically kind of shuts off the front of the motorhome.
compared to ours. This actually doesn't feel too much difference. I think the only thing we'd really notice is the uh, the difference in the cooking area. So we've got a space to uh, to use in addition to the sink and, and the hob. Whereas here, you basically need to uh, close off the sink and then you've got your work area. Now one of the things when you're driving a motorhome is they do feel wide on the road and this narrower version will definitely be easier to drive. Ah, the Malibu. We loved our time in one of these. It's got the pop top. It's got a big sliding door. And it's surprisingly spacious inside. So easy to drive. You can put it in the car parks. Very clever shower area with a concertina door. So, we're just back from the Catargo factory tour. Brilliant. Oh, it's so good. I'm just going to tell you about it. You're not allowed to film in there, but uh, we've remembered as much as we can. You have. It's <laughs> gone straight over my head. We went inside and we went up some stairs uh, onto a gantry where you could see the whole production line. We call it the sky view. They don't yeah. They do not do just like all the liner for twos, a whole row of those. There'll be one liner for two, C line, yeah. and then so it keeps it interesting as well. And everything is, is just so detailed, isn't it? Yeah. It was amazing. It's like yeah. a jigsaw puzzle. And Because each motorhome is individually specced anyway by the choices of the buyer. So there is not a single one motorhome, which is exactly the same. So yeah, they've got some job putting it together, haven't they? They make the modules individually and then all kind of, it's all constructed. But even all the woodwork in there, it's all done on site from, from scratch. Yeah. And the, the actual motorhome, you know, the sides on the motorhome go on last. So when you see the carcass of the or the internals of the the motorhome and all the complexities of the wiring the plumbing it's just mind-blowing literally i stood there and just looked at it and didn't talk to anybody for five or ten minutes just taking it all in my favorite bit as well was watching to see how they actually make the curved roof genius absolute genius that was wasn't it just amazing yeah I'm not and, going to divulge their information, no. but it was so, so interesting. Yeah, and they, and they put the uh, the aluminium inside the curve all the way around to create the Faraday cage, Yeah, which means if you get struck by lightning, you're not going to die. You're going to be safe. Yeah. <laughs> and back to the uh, the carcass of the motorhome. Uh, another interesting fact was is that you could actually drive it uh, without the sides on it, and that's one of the big differences uh, Catargo have, is that uh, because it's all self-supported inside, when you're driving... That's why it doesn't rattle as much. Yeah. Nothing is reliant on the... Because uh, it's all self-supporting. Nothing's reliant on the sides. Yeah. We could see the whole production line from nothing really came, being built up, built up, built up. And then in between each stage, because they are pushed down the production line, in between each stage have the quality gates where they are checked to make sure everything works. Because what you don't want to do, obviously, is put the sides on and then find out that something doesn't work. So, yeah, everything's checked all the way. Along. 18 vehicles come out a week from there. Yeah, I think so it goes from... It's not a from... huge amount because there is so much work involved, isn't there? Yeah. Then the final thing, once the motorhome has been completed, it goes for its water ingress <laughs> test and it's got this room with all the sprinklers on there uh, where they spray the uh, or, or pour water over the motorhome for 20 minutes. And I, I said to the woman, I said, can, can you just send Michelle in there then we'll press the button? Push her in, shut the door. But she, she wasn't having it. <laughs> She said, why is that girl power? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it was a really good experience, wasn't it? It just kind of shows how complex making a motorhome is. So much is. work goes into it, and you totally understand why things take so long. And also, a lot of it is because the Fiat chassis, there's hardly any out there, so you can understand why they can't be producing more. Even though they want to and they've got a lot of the other parts, it's the chassis which is the whole, the main part that you need to even start off. Yeah. They haven't got the parts. But I found I found our moat home. <laughs> Sorry, Katie. But you know when, you know, eventually. Line of a two. Obviously. <laughs> but even the bigger one because it's just amazing. <gasps> oh God I love it. Okay. <laughs> now I'm feeling nervous. So we're gonna stop there. And now I've got to have words with Michelle. <laughs> Reality check coming. 
You had half a cake. You had half my cake. Bye. <laughs>